you know, sometimes just being, being that individual who for most of my life didn't hunt and kind of, I mean, to be honest, was opposed to it and to totally do a 360 and, um, or 180, I should say, <laughs> but, you <laughs> yeah, know, don't to, go all to, the way around. It's back all right. to that. No, we don't want to do that. Um, but I think sometimes that I just am so passionate to make other people see what I didn't for, you know, not to age myself, but 30 years. Um, I didn't know that. Um, so I get so excited about telling other people about it that, you know, I just, that's, that's a big part of my position that I love. And you'll see that. Um, I mean, personally, I share that outside of my work. That's something that I really like to, you know, highlight through my own social media pages and to my friends and family. Um, it's more of just, who I am now as a person. So you you were would you, you were against hunting for most of your I life? was. I Ooh. was, yes. <laughs> <laughs> did you eat meat? I did, yeah. So see there, <laughs> I mean that was that was that was the pivotal turning point for me, the light bulb moment. And you know, for whatever reason, I don't know if it was the conversation that I had was different or if I just was willing to listen. Um, but for whatever reason, during a conversation with a friend, you know, he made the point that well, I'm just, I'm just hunting my food instead of going to the grocery store. It was like, Oh, well, that's brilliant. I want to do that. And yep. I've always been really into the outdoors, um, you know, hiking, camping, rock climbing, kayaking. I mean, whatever it was, I wanted to try it and do it. And so it just was a really natural fit for me once I was able to get past that um, killing an animal barrier, which now it's like, oh, well, the cow is, you know, started off alive. And so, <laughs> yeah, well, um, and, and that yeah. Pra those prairie chickens out there live a hell of a lot better life than most of the cattle or whatever yes. the chickens, you know, that you're going to buy from the, the grocery store. And it, that it's interesting to me that you, you know, where you came from and where you are now that, I mean, it seems to me like you made a pretty quick transition from I somebody I probably wouldn't have liked to somebody who I think is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you changed your mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm yeah. really glad you changed your mind. Yes, so, yes. was in in that process of going from somebody who didn't like hunting to realizing, all right, may, maybe I should give this a chance. How how did you facilitate that? Where what was the first thing you went out and did? I bought a bow, actually. Um, so alongside that, I I had only one chance of shooting a shotgun in my entire life prior to hunting. And it was in college with some friends and it was just not, um, you know, they didn't really show me how to hold it. It was just an uncomfortable experience. I didn't love it. Um, and so that was my biggest fear was I don't want to shoot a shotgun. Um, they scared me. It wasn't something I was comfortable with. So I'm going to buy a bow and I'll be a bow hunter. That seems pretty cool to me. It seems just really interesting. You the spot and stock, all that stuff, you know, I, I just really wanted to try that. So I taught myself how to shoot a bow. We had a range outside of my work at the Nebraska Game and Parks when I was there. And so mm -hmm. I just spent my lunch breaks shooting and practicing. But it was the bird dog, it was the working dogs that um, just changed my life. So my cousin who um, lives in kind of central Nebraska is a big hunter. And I just, I remember the exact moment he came to my, my parents for a big family holiday and said, you know, as much as you like hiking, as much as you like the outdoors, as much as you love working dogs, you have to try upland hunting. And I mean, that's just changed everything for me. So, um, it's, it's the dogs. <laughs> so uh, let's back up for a second. Did you ever go bow hunting for deer? Um, I actually went for turkey. Oh, you did? Um, yes, yes. Um, I was not successful. Uh, I wasn't able to get one to come in close enough. And by the time that um, the next year rolled around, by the time shotgun season opened, I was over not being able to shoot something. So I was able to harvest one with a shotgun. But uh, um, yeah, eventually I just lost patience there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, that's not an uncommon story. So yeah. then, you know, so... Then it was the dogs that got you out there. And, you know, the w what you mentioned earlier about, you know, loving to rock climb, kayak, whatever adventure. Um, we just had Mike Stewart on from Wild Rose Kennels and they are training dogs to do all kinds of, you know, accompany people in all kinds of those uh, pursuits in their life. But you found 
you you got introduced to what that dog is there for, and that yes. that was the game changer. So what what did you hunt first? Um, pheasants with her. As, yep. So that was uh, my very first pheasant hunt. I didn't have her yet. I went with a the same buddy who I started that conversation with. That kind of you know that light bulb moment, and went with him, and it was. A beautiful disaster, I'll say. It was um, pouring rain in Nebraska. So, you know, probably I should say sleep more than anything because I think it was in the 20s. Very cold, very wet to the point where, you know, we were a little bit concerned about um, just being out. It just it just was miserable. Uh, we hunted a section of public land that gets hammered pretty hard, a lot of pressure, and saw one bird the entire time. We didn't really, I mean, I was comfortable with the shotgun at that point, but we hadn't shot trap. We hadn't even discussed what would happen when a rooster flew. We talked about the difference between a hen and a pheasant, but uh, the the rooster got up, it flushed, and I just watched it. <laughs> I, couldn't, I could not, I could not respond, and I will never live that moment down. <laughs> I, uh, I've heard on multiple occasions from him that there is no better flush from a pheasant than I got on that day. And, uh, <laughs> the fact that I didn't even shoulder, it was just, it just killed him. So <laughs> that, uh, <clears throat> that is something I've seen with people new, yeah. new to it before. And it's always, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so, I mean, when you just think about that, like if you boil down the pursuit, like, Oh, I'm going to walk around and my dog's going to flush this three pound bird. And I'm going to shoot it. <laughs> but it's there's so much more going on and then when that happens that flush it's like i've never done heroin and i hope i don't <laughs> i hope i stay away from heroin the whole time i hope you do too <laughs> yeah at least until i'm like in a nursing home then whatever i'll do it i'll i'll do all kinds of drugs until then i'm going to avoid them but that flush it's like you're just chasing that high once once you get one one like close rooster it's just the experience is like, you just can't wait for that to happen again. But it's like to, to sit here and be like, I'm an adult and I got overwhelmed by this dumb bird flushing in front of me, but that's exactly what happens. And that's, that's why I love talking about this stuff with people who are new to it, because it's easy for somebody like me to forget, but until I get out there and it's something like when you explain that to somebody who's never seen it, they're like, eh, you know, they don't get it. Then you go do it. And then you're like, okay, now, now I understand why this is so awesome. Mm -hmm. That's it, you bring up a really good point. And it's something that I, I tell people um, when we discuss taking somebody new hunting and mentoring, um, I'm like, you get to relive that first hunt every single time you go out with somebody new. Like that is so cool to be a part of that. Not only do you get to see and experience that again with them, but you know, you get to be a part of their first hunt memory for the rest of their life. And it's just such a cool thing. Yep. Yeah, it is. And it's, there's, there's something, you know, I mean, I've, I've been bow hunting my entire life. I've hunted a lot of different stuff and I've introduced a bunch of people to hunting and fishing. But when you combine an exciting type of hunting that you're going to work for like upland hunting mm -hmm. and you get the dogs thrown in there and get to see that dog work. To me, it's, it's, it might be the easiest way to hook people. Like you can almost tell if somebody's a dog person and they go do that and see a good dog work, it's like, it's over. It's you, yeah. like it one flush and you're done, you, you know, yeah. and that's, that's an amazing thing. And so you, you hunted pheasants first. And yeah. did you know after that hunt, were you like, this is my thing. I'm going to do this a lot. I did. I did. I mean, which is funny because, you know, it, there were so many things that didn't happen the way we wanted it to on that hunt. But uh, yeah, I got a bird dog very shortly after that. And, um, you know, I, I went hunting once with my cousin out, uh, you know, in central Nebraska, but then I had a really tough time finding anybody, um, in my area that I could go hunting with. And it's, it's hard for me to just up and, um, you know, up and go three, four hours away in the morning, you know, I'm a parent. And so it's, it's just tough to do that. And so I just started hunting by myself. Um, I just went with a dog and we'd hit different areas of public access and through trial and error, just decided to figure it out. And, you know, it was a lot of fun. We, we made a lot of mistakes, but it was, it was fun. And I learned a lot from it. So you ended up 
Um, couldn't find anybody to go with or couldn't, you know, the, the situation was just so that you were like, all right, I'm just going to go hunt on my own. And you started doing that. And I think, I think that must say something about your personality <laughs> because a lot of people wouldn't do that. And I, I love it because it's, it's, it, it just says something there. Like I'm, I'm, I'm into this. I'm going to try it. I'm going to figure this out on your, on your own. And so what I want to know about that, when you're, when you're going out and you're picking new chunks of public land to walk with your dog, eventually you learn something about yourself. Like what, what did you learn about yourself that surprised you after becoming a hunter? Oh, that's a great question. You know, I think the biggest thing that I've learned, um, is that it really, you know, and, and I'm, I'm very competitive, um, I'm stubborn, which I think, you know, the fact that I just continued to go out makes it pretty obvious that I was stubborn. This is why I'm a, a perfect fit for a German short hair. Right. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think, I think what I learned is that really for me, hunting is about, it's about all of it. It's about the time outdoors, um, you know, appreciating the outdoors that I want to harvest something. I can get frustrated if I miss shots and things like that. But at the end of the day, I don't really care if I do harvest something. It's more just the escape outside with the dog, enjoying everything, introducing new people. And I think that kind of surprised me, especially since the the number one reason that I decided to start hunting was for the food. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously if I'm leaving empty handed, you know, I'm not, I'm not fulfilling that. So um, it, it's just become so much more than I could have ever expected. Yeah. It's, there's a lot to it. And, you know, the, the thing that I've come to realize in my life, and I, I, I suspect you'll get there sooner because you sound like my wife, you sound like you're smarter than I am. <laughs> uh, it, when you, when you go out there with a dog, if you don't real if, if you want to work hard, but you don't really care if you kill something or not, the, I think the dog feeds off of that. And there's not the, not the pressure, you know what I mean? Like, I think they're, I think they're real in tune. It's like kids, you know, like you're teaching a kid to fish or ride a bike or something. If you're kind of losing it a little bit or you want it a little too much, it's, it's usually not a good lesson. And if you've, if you've kind of got that, that chill attitude and you're like, let's just go and enjoy it. It seems to me like my, my bird hunts go really well when I'm kind of like, yeah, whatever, (laughs) you know, like let's, let's go walk this row and hunt this field and do this. And it seems like the dog's like, okay, so we don't have to rush through. I can work through the scent. And it just seems to be a good attitude to develop over time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And there's, there's just a different rhythm there. I feel like too, it's just a, I mean, I still walk fast and I still walk with purpose, but it, there's just a, a different intensity to it, I think. Yep. So with your, with your history as a vet tech, when you picked up this GSP puppy, um, it's a female, right? She, yep. She is. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you train her? Um, so actually, uh, Reese is her name. I got her as an adult. Um, she oh. was two, two, I believe, um, when I got her. And so she came from uh, a woman outside of Missouri, a breeder, and she got raced back, um, you know, after she'd already been sold, it just didn't work out for the previous family. And, um, which I'm, I'm sorry for them, but I'm very glad for me. (laughs) They're lost. (laughs) <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and she has just been, she's been the best dog. Um, you know, I, I wasn't really set on that breed. I was not looking to have that breed. Um, you know, I just, I, I'd been across quite a few dogs in working in the vet clinic that, you know, they didn't hunt, they didn't work. They, you know, probably were expected to be quiet, lazy house dogs, which just that, that is not that breed. And so, um, she is the calmest German short hair I've ever met. And I will never look for a German short hair from another breeder than, than where she came from, because she is so calm and cool. But when she's in the field, she's just nonstop. She's got an incredible nose. She'll pick up birds that other people's dogs will run past. Um, but then she just sleeps all day long. She's just a couch potato. So <laughs> she's a cat at home. <laughs> yes, yeah, she is. And she's beautiful. I mean, I know I'm biased, but she is a great looking dog. So <laughs> <laughs> the best probably. Yes. So, yes. All right. But this, this family that got her as a puppy at two years said, this is not the dog for us. Um, gave her back. You pick her up. So did you 
did you train her to hunt or did it, was it like, we're just going to go hunting and you're going to figure it out with me? Yeah. So she'd actually been trained to hunt previously. Okay. Um, in fact, the, the, the breeder trainer had, um, done a junior hunt title on her. Um, so she'd had a, a decent amount of work done. Um, she had not waterfowl hunted yet. We figured out that she really enjoyed water. So that was something that I, I helped train her how to do. We're still working on that. Um, she think, that ducks taste bad so she will she'll pick them up and start to bring them back and then decide that she doesn't really like them and <laughs> so um it's it's been a lot of fun we've hunted a lot of new species so since i've had her um she's been on sharp tail grouse greater prairie chicken snipe um those are not species that she had hunted previously so we've done some work trying to um you know figure out that those are birds that we're going after and um she's done a very good job adapting to it it's fun to watch her learn and and start picking up on that yeah they don't i you know a lot of people only, they get a dog and they hunt one kind of species with it. It's a pheasant dog or a grouse dog or whatever. They might mix in woodcock or something. And I think there's this perception out there that it takes a lot. You know, it's it's different going from upland to waterfowl, of course. Yeah. But to go from like pheasants to quail to sharp tails to whatever, it doesn't, it seems like most good dogs are like, okay, I get it. It, it, it You know, it's, it's not, they, they don't struggle with that transition too much. Usually it doesn't seem like. No, my, um, my favorite experience was our first time on a snipe hunt and it was actually opening pheasant weekend and we hopped over to a wetland and, um, you know, flushed a couple of these birds and it, it, it took quite a while. I mean, I had to figure out what they were. Then I had to check to make sure that I had everything I could to hunt these birds. And by the time that that happened, there was still birds sitting there, <laughs> which was pretty impressive. <laughs> so, um, I was able to, to harvest one and all it took was that one shot for her to figure out oh we're hunting these and so then she proceeded to point them and um we were able to flush them and it it was fun to just see that click for her um the second that you know the the gun fired it was like oh okay i know what Mm -hmm. we're doing now 